Hello, welcome to a Nintendo Power Retrospectives vlog. This is going to be separate from our standard Nintendo Power Retrospectives episode for the month. And we are doing a vlog book, re book review this time. I'm taking a look at Playing With Power NES Classic. This is the Nintendo, well, Prima, published officially licensed Nintendo Companion volume to the NES Mini, which is the all-in-one game system with 30 NES games that everyone is fighting over in the halls of the aisles of Walmart and GameStop and various other places this holiday season. And this book is meant to be the companion to that, so it probably will be easier to get a hold of. They printed more of these. You can probably find them on Amazon, that sort of thing. So I like the presentation of this book. It's a nice hardcover edition. Both sides of the cover have the um, layout of the NES controller. The box itself, forgive the background noise of me sitting stuff down on the desk, the box itself is nice. It's modeled after a NES cartridge. It even has a little texture on here for the ridges, has front and back of the cartridge. Um, even the underside of it looks like the underside of an NES cartridge. As for the book itself, the book takes a lot of art and assets from Nintendo Power Magazine and reformats them, particularly related to screenshot maps and a few doodles for games. Um, we have like screenshot maps for Super Mario Brothers, for Legend of Zelda, for various other Nintendo games. In addition, there are even tips and tricks here and information from the classified information and counselor's corner columns from Nintendo Power Magazine. Uh, there's basic controls for the game. We even have like straight up stills here from Nintendo Power itself over on the side. So, this covers a, lo a lot of the first-party Nintendo titles that were in the NES Classic set. Not all of them, but a lot of them. We have, like, Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3. We have Metroid. We have Star Tropics. We have both of the... Um, we, we have both Legend of Zelda games for the NES. We have Kirby. General gameplay notes. Screenshot. Yeah, two, not all games get screenshot maps. Like Kirby has Kirby's Adventure has uh, general gameplay notes, but also the Kirby games are less map dependent to a certain degree. At least at this point in the series, later games will be at will add different routes of the game and hidden items you can capture and collect based on what powers you have equipped at what times and what route you take through the game and that sort of thing and possible alternate gameplay option and, and ending is based on how well you perform and how much you get and this lead um so where this comes in so it's a good book it contains a lot of the information that if you had Nintendo Power magazines from the time, you would have them in the this, have this information in this book. In many ways, if you're looking for tips for these games, it's a much nicer presentation than going on GameFAQs. Yes, you it's free to go on GameFAQs and look up an FAQ and that sort of thing. And GameFAQs has now started doing HTML FAQs. Well, has been doing this for a while. So with those, you can do a better presentation for your information than a plain text document and ASCII maps and that sort of thing. But from a technical... As someone with a background in technical writing, the presentation of this book is better, much better, than what you'd be getting from a website. And to a certain degree, if you're sitting in front of your television and you're not next to a computer, a book 
much like Nintendo Power Magazine back in the day, works better for as a reference guide if you need to check information, look at a level map, or world overall world map, than in other games. Again, as for example, with The Legend of Zelda um, games, or Metroid, or that sort of thing. That said, this book is not without its faults. In particular, this game, this book, only covers Nintendo first-party titles. Which means the third-party titles that are in the Classics Collection that would also merit coverage and merit having information on them, like, for example, Final Fantasy for the NES, are not covered in this book. So, that's an issue, I would say. Now, there may be the plan to do a NES Classics Volume 2, which would cover those games. And there's also, and that's also at least from my view as a person who's doing the Nintendo Power retrospectives, I get the feeling that this book came, that part of the reason this book, there was a big purge of Nintendo Power scans and materials on a lot of websites, from retro mags, from the internet archive, that sort of thing. And in the, and honestly, for a lot of this, in the past, Nintendo was not making any money from Nintendo Power Magazine, and this book is kind of the way to actually make money on that and to capitalize on people's nostalgia and that sort of thing. And on the one hand, I appreciate that, and I'm, but it's, on the other hand, if we're getting this so piecemeal, and if there's no legit way to purchase old back issues of Nintendo Power Magazine, then it's less of something that I can cut slack for. I would prefer that the that the magazines were still up there for the, all the materials that weren't that aren't in here for stuff like oh that's an example we don't have um, Breath of the Manta we don't have uh, Vice Project Doom we don't have Shadowgate or the Icom Adventure games that were on the NES we don't have oh all sorts of games we don't have Rad Racer we don't have RC Pro Am, that sort of thing. And this is kind of an extra big deal because Rare's legacy on the NES is very substantial. Not all Rare games have been good. There have been plenty of Rare games I have reviewed on the show that are frankly terrible. Like, really terrible. But, on the other hand, I'd like to have a second book of this come out with coverage for, for example, um, Solar Jetman. That's a game which didn't quite win me over at the time, but it's I believe kind of my kind of my vibe at the time, and my least my vibe now. It's a game that if I were to rather than having to play it in short bursts or play it having to play it for the show and play it for review, it where I have to play it, and it's a certain degree of obligation. Also, there's the weight of I have this big pile of other games for the show that I have to cover just from that one issue of the magazine, if I had the opportunity to sit down and just play it for a long period of time, I'd feel like it's a game that would grow on me. And I think it's a game where having more coverage would be good. Additionally, for some of these games, they may not have had complete guides in Nintendo Power Magazine in the first place, and this book does give the opportunity to expand coverage. Um, although, again... The magazine, this book only really covers first party NES titles. And there's a lot of good first party NES titles, but it also means we're not getting, not getting into the Mega Man games. So, it's a good start for a series. I would hope that we'd get more books in this series. If this were to live with the potential of what's in this, what's in this book, and if we were to get something that would sort of justify all of the Nintendo Power magazines getting yanked off the internet in terms of scans, which would let us go back and look at this material, then I'd want to get Playing With Power Volume 2, the Capcom collection with guides from Mega Man and DuckTales and 1 and 2 and the and all the other big, big Capcom games. 
for Gunsmoke, for Bionic Commando, that sort of stuff. I want to see that. I want to see a guy, like a full set of guides for NES Strider, which is a radically different game from Strider and all the other platforms. That sort of stuff. I'd want to see more volumes for this. As it stands, this is a, certainly a good book. And if, and if you're an old school retro game collector or you want to get into collecting, the NES Mini may not be the thing for you if you want to be a collector or you want to like, have lots of games for these systems to play, not just your small smattering of your small nostalgia fix and you can call it good. This book, on the other hand, is much more useful and has more things that, have, that retro gaming fans will get out of it than just what you get out of the NES Mini. There's plenty of great screenshots of the game themselves, level maps, you, and it's full coverage of the game, so you get a full longitudinal picture of the game and how it's built and structured, which also, if you're getting into game design, is worth taking a look at, where you're not just looking at the game and how it's played and how it works in the main focused context of, your, of the act, act of play, but also looking at the screenshots of the game and discussion of how the game's levels are structured and what you're expected to do or what you need to do to proceed both before playing and then after playing and seeing how well the game executes at conveying this information to the player through the game itself and all this other sorts of stuff it's it's a really good book to have in your collection so i do recommend picking this title up um i accidentally discarded the information which had the price on it. I believe this was like 30-something bucks, but I pre-ordered it from Amazon. Pre-ordering books is actually something that's probably better than pre-ordering games, to a degree. Um, I don't know if this is going to come out as a paperback edition, but if you are a retro gamer and looking for something to get, get yourself for Christmas, or if you know someone who is a retro gamer and looking for a good retro gaming related gifts for them aside from games themselves and hardware. This is a good collection thing for them. Didn't get them for Christmas. So, there is that. Have any of you picked up Playing With Power? Would you be interested in, um, did you enjoy the book? Do you agree? Please feel free to post in the comments. And for that matter, if you have any thoughts on whether you want a book like this for the Super Nintendo, or whether what you want would be like, oh, say a way to digitally purchase issues of Nintendo Power Magazine from from Nintendo as far as back issues, that would be also something I'd like to be interested in hearing about in the comments. So, thank you very much for watching. <music>